Episode 42 of the Rated RR Podcast. It's Rish Roshan right here, along with Ziaul Raushan. And we have a wonderful guest with us as well. A very special guest. It's the chairman of one of the biggest clubs in Singapore football, Tampa Heath Rovers Football Club, Desmond Ong. Uh, delighted to have you. How are you doing? Have you been uh, keeping yourself warm now that you're back in Singapore after accruing all those air miles? I'm very well, guys. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, it's good to be home. What can I say? Yeah, that's right. Wanted to get into the guest there, Raushan. Feeling left out a little bit. And I'll come to you. How are you doing, man? I- I'm good. I'm good. I-, I feel like because it's a video podcast, I need to address this, that I have a gash above my eyebrow, but it's nothing too serious. It wasn't a Beckham-like incident. It was me being <laughs> foolish and uh, hitting my head against a tree, as Rosh knows the full story. But all's good. Very excited to be here. And this is not about me. This is about Desmond. Desmond, thank you so much for spending time with us, especially ahead of the new season. First things first, why not you tell us, what does a chairman of a SPL club do? What is your day-to-day like? Uh, not much. When the brown sticky stuff hits the fan, then you put up your hand and say, my fault. <laughs> um, I, I, I can't speak for other clubs, but since since I've I've taken over at Tampines, um, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, right? Uh, there are bits of it I enjoy a lot. There are bits that just have to be done. And there are bits of it that I don't quite like. I guess, with, as with any other job. Um, there isn't a typical day, as it were. There, there, there are more phases, like during the season. You have your pre-season, then you have in-season, and then you have post-season, as it were. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy to share to share um, those thoughts or, or experiences if you were to ask me the right questions. <laughs> oh, we we're, were asking you a few interesting questions. We'll see how, how you handle so it. You are. Part and parcel of it, right? <laughs> No, but how do you, I mean, you, you've got a full-time job as well, aside from this. So how do you sort of balance that out, you know, being a chairman of an SPL club and then with your, with your day-to-day work as well? Um, it, it was a challenge. It is a challenge. Um, it's not easy. I guess it helps that my family is fairly supportive. Uh, my children are fairly grown up. Uh, once in NS, uh, my daughter's away. So it helps. And then I think the wife's just glad to get me out of the house. <laughs> The, the, the partners and the colleagues at my law firm are fairly fairly relaxed. Um, so they're very understanding as well. If I'm not around, then this must be at a football stadium or doing something football. Uh, and then of course, as, as some of you may know, I've got other interests as well. Yeah. Uh, horse racing, um, cycling, so on and so forth. So sometimes there just aren't enough hours in a day. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I see that stuff from online. We're following each other on, on Facebook and and on Instagram, and I've, I've also seen that you've, like I said, been accruing those air miles, been traveling around the world a little bit. I saw some photos of a trip that you and uh, you, Gavin, and Mustafa actually took. What was that about? <laughs> so, so it helps that within the club, we're quite good friends as well. Uh, okay. So after the last game of the season, uh, Farah had to rush off and bless him. He hadn't seen his family for a while. Mm. Uh, so me and Farah sort of made vague plans to meet in Europe. Because I was going to go over and see my daughter. At that time, we weren't, we weren't sure about the, the travel arrangements and the details and all. So it was like, if, if it happens, we will meet in Europe, right? Yeah. Um, I've never been to his part of the world, his home, hometown. It's supposedly beautiful. And I'm not sure if you guys have. But it was easier in terms of coming over to England. I, I, I lived in England for a short while. So I know my okay. around there. And I said, Farah, if you can come over, we can go catch a couple of games. And then William sort of overheard the comments and said, in typical William fashion, eh, hey, both so. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, so, I mean, if you come along and then, and then accommodations all sorted, we can go stay with my daughter, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, then the sorts law or, or, or as luck would have it, the, the, the travel arrangements open up. I was going, I gave Farah, Farah a ring. He said, okay, I'll come join you for a week. And then really, of course, tag along. Um, and then, of course, in the midst of all that, we asked Gav. And Gav said, actually, I'm getting married. And then I think we have <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a problem, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tested in his brain for a bit. And he said, you know what? Maybe if I ask my newly wed wife nicely, she might agree to go there on honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it ended up, the four of us went, went, went blighty together for about a week. Together at least. We spent yeah. bearing there. And then while we were there, we caught a lot of football games. So that was nice. So Desmond, it wasn't a scouting trip, huh? You weren't scouting players while so, watching this game, huh? <laughs> we, 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 we wanted to prank our fans by... By you know posting cryptic pictures and saying we were talking to someone, like, <laughs> just became too much work and, and we just had, had a fairly good time. I, I think like most Singaporeans and most people in the world, you know, we, we we've not travelled for a while. It was just yeah. nice to go away, just just yeah. to be in an environment. I think we enjoyed that. Le- leaving aside the fact that that we, we are linked by the football club, I think it's just mm-hmm. four lads having a good time. And I'm sure if you guys get to go, you'd enjoy it as much as well. 
Yeah, pretty sure we would. I mean, uh, the, the interesting thing there was you mentioned Gavin actually getting married and convincing his wife to to go with him. She was lucky because I remember when I got married, the next day I was flying off with Home United to Vietnam for a preseason trip and I couldn't bring her along. So she wasn't too pleased about that. All right, the fun stuff out of the way. We're going to get into the serious questions now, Desmond. Hope you're, hope you're ready for some of this. Uh, basically, let's, let's start things off with how preparations have been going for the club uh, heading into the season. Um. I think they've been good, as, as good as can be. Um, because of COVID and all that, we've not had the opportunity to, to go away. Uh, we've tried in the past to go away for a pre-season tournament. Yeah. Uh, and so we've, we've, we've worked out with some of the other SPL clubs um, to try and have friendly games against each other. Um, but other than that, I think it's pretty good, as good as can be in the circumstances. And, and bear in mind that we've got a fairly, um, quite a number of new faces with yeah. whom we are bidding in. Mm. Uh, Desmond, you touched on it there, not being able to go away in preparation for the season. That's not the only difference, right? Going into a new season with the SPL fixtures just announced, it's going to be four rounds rather than three. My question to you is, at a chairman level, are you at all consulted when decisions like this are made? Uh, to be fair, yes. We, we, had, we had a couple of meetings at Jalan Basar. Um, I think four rounds, uh, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here, I think four rounds is aspirational. Um, because of the COVID situation, yeah. mm. I think the agreement among us is we try and finish as many rounds as possible. So we're planning for four. I think we we would we would all be very happy we finish three. Yeah, simply and, because of COVID yeah. situation. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, as we say, how, how, how do you make God laugh, right? Tell him your plans, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you never know what's going to sort of happen, right? Uh, with with, okay. with uh, how things are developing and, and how things are developing so quickly. And another thing that we kind of noticed from Tampanis in the off-season, and this is something fascinating, which is I don't think has really been done in Singapore mm. football, is, is you guys have actually decided to give some of your players five-year contracts. What was the thinking behind that? Uh, long-term cheap labour. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wasn't going to go there, but I'm glad you uh, it's, it's, it's been mentioned that online. Are you, are you going to debunk it for us, please? No, I, 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 I think leave, leave that aside for the moment. Let, let's just steal the idea. Um, yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of challenges running a club. And, and I, I know we started this by saying you're the chairman, you're this, you're that. Actually, I'm not a lot of things. I'm a lawyer by training, right? And then the trouble is when people get involved, then they think they know everything. I, I don't. And I'll be the first to tell you that. But I do know business, I feel. I, I, I know how the world works slightly in the corporate world. Mm. So life is oftentimes very simple. Different industries. Mm. Uh, if you have time, or rather if you have money, you don't need time. You can do what Lion City sellers have done. Mm. Right, but if you don't have money, then you need time. These are the two drivers in business. So we don't have that kind of money, so we need time. And mm. part of that is investing in the youth and then having a, a slightly longer term plan. I can't go out and buy talent immediately, so we've got to cultivate them. Um, the players that were chosen um, was not difficult. These players, if you know them uh, more than just you know the sort of personalities they are, the sort of characters they are. The greater difficulty for us is to then persuade the rest of the squad why these players have been chosen and why they have not been chosen. Mm, mm, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so this is really an investment in people and investment in time. Does it come with risk? Of course it comes with risk. Most things come with risk, but it is yeah. a step that we have to take. We cannot not afford to not deal with all the challenges that are facing us on and off the field. Yeah. yeah? And w without, without going into details of contracts, obviously it's sensitive and it's confidential between the club and, and the players, is there a scope within that contract for as these players grow and develop that you know there will be increments and things like that going forward? Absolutely. We we have inbuilt increments that are also heavily incentivized. Mm. Uh, I don't think the players will mind sharing. It's not a case of take eight hundred dollars for the next five years, no big deal, <laughs> right? Mm. Um, yeah. So I think the contract is, I would say, rather attractive. Um, we are also committed to developing our players. So if they ever got an offer from an overseas club, we would yeah. not. Yeah, we. So mm, that's yeah. always mm. been our mantra. You, you need to play at a higher level until and unless our league develops. Then it's it's very childish for me to say no. You've got a contract. Uh, Buriram have come. No way. You're sitting here. So on and so forth. Yeah. So that, I, I, it, sorry to interrupt, so, Desmond, because I, I just wanted to say on that note, having them sign these contracts, I, I wonder if 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 that's an avenue for you know if these players are going to leave to go overseas, that is an avenue for creating a transfer market. Is that something that, that's been considered or not even it, 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 something that you've thought about? 
actually, I have to confess, right? I look like a wise man and not. That, that is actually a very pleasant sort of buy effect of, of them. When, when, we, mm. when we started talking about long-term contracts with them, the idea wasn't that, oh, someday when somebody comes knocking, I can ask for $800,000. No. Yeah. But it's beginning to dawn on us that, that that is what will happen if people want to yeah. take them early from their contract. It's just yeah. that I think that general mindset in the region is that nobody pays transfer fees, or at least to yeah. the extent they want them to. So that's got to change as well. Mm. And was it easy to convince the, the three players who signed this contract when you broached the idea? Because it is, Tempris have trailblazed in that, in that avenue of things, right? So was it easy to convince the players? No, well, obviously I drug them and viewed them because I'm a player, <laughs> right? So I stunned them with double talk and all. So, uh, we sat down, we had long chats with them. We talked about the future of the club, what their aspirations were. Uh, in the cases of the, in the case of the two younger players, we spoke to their parents as well. Okay. Uh, set out our vision um, and we asked them if they were happy to jump on and be part of it and, and I think all things considered um, it's probably a good deal at the moment for, for both sides for both the clubs yeah. yeah. when, when you asked was it easy I mean it took time but I think there was no arm twisting involved and... okay so no drugs involved huh? no 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 okay okay, okay. Yeah, sorry yeah. I just want to touch on something Desmond you, you talked earlier about the time and the money factor, and and we can understand that you know business when you when you bring up anecdotes like that. So my question is, in terms of what companies have done, do you then hope to inspire almost other clubs to follow suit, hopefully for the betterment of the league? Um, I have to be a bit wary here, right? Because it's different strokes for different folks. I, I could sit yep. here each and say you should do not. Every club has for us. There's a place in the ecosystem for us. We're certainly not going to be the Bayern Munich, right? Aspirationally, we hope to be Ajax, but it sounds very grandiose. Um, we are very proud of the fact that a lot of young players um, have come through our ranks. Uh, we know a lot of young players. Uh, Gavin's background, my background, William's background. I, I think we know a lot of the young players for a variety of reasons. Gavin, mm. because of his involvement with youth football from way back. William, because of his involvement with sports school. Um, myself, because my son used to play with a large number of these players. So, 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 if you look at the players in Tampines, for instance, Andrew Oyong, I've, I've known him since he was um, seven years old. Ryan wow. Sandra, I've known him since he was nine years old. Mark yeah. Ranta, I've known him since he was 11. Um, so on and so forth, right? Even Elijah at Gelang, I've known him since he was a nine-year-old boy. Mm. Um, and, and because they know you, their parents know you, the, the conversation is a lot easier. Uh, Jacob Mahler, I've known him since he was 13. Uh, <laughs> So, so we have that advantage in that we can speak to them. The parents know who we are. We're, we're not uh, here today, gone tomorrow. Mm. So, so that's that's a lot easier in terms of starting the conversation. But I have to yeah. say, I'm quite pleased that the, can I say the newer generation of players, uh, they're a lot more with it. Their parents are a lot more with it. It's no longer just some Chinese boy or some Malay boy who can kick a ball, right? Mm. Uh, they come to the game, they're well prepared. And their parents have gone and sat in the sun for many hours a lot of them have received academy coaching, the F-17s, the ISAs, the ESAs, the City, GSSL. So, so they, they've also had overseas experience at Gothia and... Yeah. And yeah. So, so, so as opposed to maybe say Russian time, right? Russian time when you were playing. A lot of these players are coming through. They're more knowledgeable, uh, not yeah. just technically, but also outside the game, what they're looking for and what they want. Mm, so, yeah. so in that sense, it's been a lot easier in terms of a, a corporate talk, a corporate approach to the game. I, I, I got to agree with that because we've, we've done interviews with the likes of Joel, Jacob previously, even spoken to Hami and, uh, and Saifullah. And, and actually what we've found is when you speak to these players, they've got a broader worldview of yeah. things, you know, their, their mindset is completely different. Yeah. So it, it's been really impressive to, to speak to them and to listen to this. And it's very sort of encouraging to us. It's heartening to, to hear that, you know, they're thinking about more than just, you know, come show up half an hour before training, go play, yeah. and then that's it. Mm. So it's, mm. it's, it's, it's brilliant to hear. Uh, you, you mentioned something interesting earlier, different strokes for different folks. And you also brought up LCS. And we know about LCS. We know about their model. They've got the finances. They've got the structure in place. How, you know, with, with those challenges that they, that they pose to the rest of the teams in the league, how does a club like Tampanese Rovers look to respond to those challenges? What is the plan here for the Stags? Um, okay, that, that, that question can be asked on many different... Facets. Yeah. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Um, let's start with the fans, right? If, if you are a fan of the stacks, how would you feel? Uh, LCS has turned up. They're signing anything that moves and some that don't move. <laughs> uh, and then we keep going, banging about you. I mean, as a fan, you want your team to win. 
right? You, you want to be there at the finals, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, hence, I will need to formulate a plan that will make us very competitive. I mean, hand mm-hmm. on heart, uh, two, three years time, call me back on the phone and laugh in my face. I think in <laughs> two to three years time, we will be very competitive. Again, I come back to the time and money being main drivers. I, I don't have the money now to go and buy the very best players, right? Mm. In terms of where we are moving, um, if you look at the recent uh, under-23 squad that's been mentioned, right? We're being congratulated on having five stacks in that. I mean, yeah. without much away. Actually, eight of those are our players. There are three more that have been signed. We just haven't unveiled, right? Um, and then there are those that are set back at uh, OTH that haven't been called or are just slightly too old, right? Um, uh, that, that there's, there's Stone, who's in a young Lions squad, that, that, that's a fantastic player. We've got Amiru Haikal. Uh, we've got Daman yeah. Kim. We've got Hong mm. Yuwen. So, hand on heart, I would say of the best 20 young players below 23, we've got about 12 of them on our books. Right? Mm. So, if their trajectory continues, they keep their heads firmly planted. We put them in an environment where, where, where they can flourish and function. Now, I think in two years' time, the landscape changes slightly in terms of our competitiveness. In terms yeah. of we're going to have the best local players, I feel, if things go according to plan. Of course, LCS may, may be with, with their sports science and what they do. They, and, and that can only be good for Singapore football. The yeah. standard just keeps getting higher and higher. And, and that excites me as a Singaporean. Yeah, and, and make sure you hit them with a transfer fee if they're coming in to, to steal <laughs> the guys that you've developed. No, that's, uh, that's, that's an anti LCS clause. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one, one thing. They, I... <laughs> One thing I picked up on is you said we can call you in two, three years' time to reappear on the board. A couple of things. Thanks for having faith that will keep going for so long <laughs> and we'll hold you to your word and we'll come back to you in uh, possibly 2025 to see how it's unveiling. Uh, Desmond, you talk about this project of investing in youth. I like that analogy you brought up about IX and stuff like that. Just very quickly, Rosh, don't get too surprised. I'm jumping the order. But how important is Gavin to this whole project? Very Gavin is very important. You would be surprised at the number of players when we sit down with them and their parents. Um, without giving too much away, a lot of them have a Gavin clause inserted into their contract. Meaning that if Gav were to leave, um, they then have certain options thereafter. I, I think Gav is the new breed of coaches. Uh, it's one of the new breed of coaches that, that the younger players respond to. Again, this has not appeared magically overnight. Football wasn't invented last week, right? Uh, these players have come through the ranks, they've been through the youth system, they've heard of GAF, they've worked with GAF, they've liked working with GAF. Right? So for a lot of them, they've known GAF for at least 10 years, ever since they were junior footballers. So, so a large part of them is um, this enjoyment of working with a coach whom they feel appreciates them. Uh, is GAF the antidote? Is he the magic potion? Is he the answer to everything? Is he all things to all men? The short answer is no. He's, he's still learning his trade, but you know, for the amount of time, hours, and commitment he puts in, we'd be hard pressed to find someone who is, mm. is as dedicated to him, to, to the game as he is. Mm. So I feel it's our role as management, as chairman, to put him and Farah, don't forget Farah, and William, yeah. the position where they can learn their trade, um, get as much experience, get as many skills as possible, and then to be in the best possible position. Same with the players, I don't want to get managing the club in three years or five years' time. Right? He mm. should go as well. He should yeah. go. Mm. Right, unless the league undergoes a huge transformation, right, and mm. then it comes the league to be, then he should go as well. He should fly his trade elsewhere. If you want to be good at your craft, like you know, you need to go, you need to go outside your comfort zone. Mm. So, expect to hear get being sacked in three years' time. <laughs> um, uh, I, I lost my train of thought for a second there because you threw me off with that. Expect Jeff to be sacked in about three years' time no, now. Just no, I, I know, I know, I know. I know. I, just, I, I, I wanted to actually, I don't want to go to last season and talk about last season because that's that's in the past but I kind of want to get um, your thoughts on what kind of lessons were learned you know coming into into this campaign okay so I think a lot of humbling lessons were learned for, for myself as well uh, we can sit here and make a lot of excuses but I think um, I along with my committee members possibly were guilty of complacency uh, mm-hmm. complacent in the sense that we thought that look uh Previous year, we were thought the AFC group, right? Uh, yeah. Before COVID put an end to it. Uh, we thought even with um, the team that we have, we've always, we're always competitive in our local league, right? So when you turn up and you see John Book turning out 50 players, prime that <laughs> right? Uh, with a bigger, bigger uh, technical team than the number of players we have, then, then you realize that this is the big leagues, right? Um, we thought we could cope with a couple of our boys being... Um, called up for national service. We couldn't. Mm. 
mm. they couldn't. Um, we, we thought that by having some experienced um, defenders, we could sort of um, adjust our game. We couldn't. We couldn't. Mm. The pace, um, it, was, it was really a, 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 a humbling experience. It was an eye opener for us. Um, we sat down, we came back, um, we took a lot of notes. Uh, we've done, we feel we've done things a lot better. It wasn't a simple case of now we've played the Champions League, we come back to the league, we're going to walk over. No, we came back and we got further humble. And, yeah. and, 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 and that, I tell you, the, the, when something like that happens to the club, right, it either makes or breaks you. Right, and, and, then, and then we came back and then we sort of drew into ourselves. We realized that certain things had to change. Um, certain, certain parts of the project, certain parts of the process had to be tweaked. Um, certain people who had sort of outgrown the club or the club had outgrown them, they, they had to go. Mm. Right, and, and so a few difficult decisions were made and hopefully we're stronger as a class of that. Yeah. But you, you've played in the Champions League before. You, oh. you know, it's night and day. It's night and day. It's right? a completely different level, man. And, and that's why I had a lot of sympathy for, for, for you guys going into it. And at the time as well, you know, I understood mm. that there were lots of young players in there. There were lots of players who were, you know, missing out to injury, going to national service. So it's always going to be a very difficult campaign, especially when in one that's so condensed. You know, it wasn't like the Champions League I played in 10 years, 10, 12 years ago, whatever it was, you know, where you had time between matches. This one was every yeah. three days you're playing. It's mm. incredibly mm. difficult for the players. Mm. I now remember what I was going to do when I lost my train of thought. I was going to plug our chat with Gavin because <laughs> he brought up Champions League and we spoke to him while he was actually in Uzbekistan. And yep. personally, I'm a, I'm a big fan. If you're listening into this, go and listen to, to Gavin. Even back then, the stuff that he spoke about, the stuff that we talked about was fascinating, a wonderful insight. And uh, I'm glad we're going to get to, to see him again uh, this season, Roshan. Yeah, certainly. And I just have to ask Desmond a quick question on Gavin, actually. I know you wax lyrical, lyrical about uh, how he is integral to your project and stuff like that. What you went through last year must have been undoubtedly the most difficult experience as the chairman of the club. Did it at all cross your mind that perhaps Gavin is not the one to lead the club forward? Uh, no, not, not, not for a moment. Because we've not all, we've never been a one-season club, right? Mm. So when we sat down with Jeff, when we sat down with Farah, we, we, we have this saying, um, everybody can win but not everybody can lose, right? Mm -hmm. I told Gav and I told Farah, imagine the conversation we would have if we went on a 10-game losing streak. And then, of course, <laughs> that came to fruition. <laughs> because, because success came fairly early for Gav. I mean, we're winning, yeah. the, cup, we're winning right. the, the, the charity shield. We topped our AFC and then we lost narrowly to Elbrex in the league and so on and so forth. So suddenly, it seemed like a piece of cake, right? That's how football is. It's a results-oriented business. Of course, yeah. yeah. Or you look like a genius, right? And when things don't don't happen for you, and then suddenly sack the coach, sack the chairman, sack the board. So I think we have a lot of calmness within the club in terms of mm. what our project is and what we're trying to do. And and it's not a case of you know you went deep people and say this one that one. You can tangible progress. You know who's missing. You know what the missing parts are and how we are mm. working to try and Of course, like most things in life, sorts law. You know people get an injury here. Yeah. Uh, loses interest, LCS comes in and buys your captain, you know, things like that. <laughs> but within, within that, we do have a plan, right? And, 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 and to be fair, we spend a lot of time speaking of fans um, and, and telling them what we're doing. So, so maybe, perhaps you don't see so many rabid fans behind yeah. us going, mind what's going on. So, so, so they understand. But having said that, it was disappointing. It was humbling. It was the there, there's no way to sugarcoat that. And, and that lesson will stay with us for a long time. Yeah, I think it was perhaps important as well if you think about a longer-term career of Gavin mm. to, to go through those difficulties and figure a way out together as a, as a club. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's around. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan, as I, as I said. Now, a part of your, oh, your sorry, strategy... Sorry, sorry carry on. Drop you there for a moment. I, I do want yeah. to... I think it's fair to, to have a shout out at this point. That at his lowest, when, when, when the results were going against us, what, what really heartened or, or gave me a lot of comfort was, was, was some of the senior coaches around like Clement uh, no Ali even you know sending words of encouragement and messages and I, I think that's something that we should not um, let go unnoticed or unremarked yeah. I mean with, mm. within that, that community that we have um, people are actually quite supportive and reaching yeah. out and, you know chin up and we understand what's going on and that was fantastic yeah. and I think as a club and as people we really appreciated that Brilliant, brilliant. I mean, interrupt me anytime, but that was an excellent way of, uh, of, yeah. of interrupting me and, and, and <laughs> giving a shout out to those, uh, to those senior coaches. Great to hear that. There's a lot of support in the fraternity as well. 
uh, for Gavin and for the club. Now, one of the other things that we wanted to move on to was the fact that aside from the five-year contracts, I know Kyoga Nakamura got one of them and he's part of your foreign contingent. Mm. Um, you've retained him, uh, Boris, and Zerudin Mamedovic. It's not something we commonly see in the league. You know, there's often lots of changes. What was the thinking behind that? Uh, again, again, it's the same thing that, um, you know, you come into work every day. Um, if, if you form a rapport with your colleagues, you feel that they're fit for purpose. Uh, they're, they're good people to be around. Then that gives you that sort of, um, how shall I put it, that, that added onus to, to want to come in and mm. just part of a high yeah, performing thing, uh, yeah. thing, right? I mean, if, if the guy was a moron, the guy at the desk next to you, right? You're like, oh my God, what do they see? And yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. to get it. And then for the foreign players, they've, they've uprooted themselves. So, so we, we scout them quite extensively. Extensively. Um, Boris and Zeko particularly because, um, again, Farah went and spoke to their folks. Uh, mm. We have a thought list. And, and, and the temperament needs to be right. So having gone through all that trouble, it's not a case of you've been in us 11 months. Thank you very much. Here you yeah. go. Right? <laughs> Armin, Armin, we're still friends. It was sad because Armin came in, he had pretty big shoes to fill. Because remember, it was Jordan before. Jordan, yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm. And, and I mean, I, I love Armin. I'm glad he's found a club, right? You would have seen on social media. But yeah. he just mm. didn't quite fit in both on and off the field. So uh, we don't always get it right. right? But lovely lad, nonetheless. Lovely lad. Uh, Desmond, you speak about those foreign players there as part of retaining the foreign contingent almost. Has Singapore citizenship at all been discussed with someone like Nakamura? It's been mentioned as well as uh, Mehmedovic, possibly. Yeah. Um, Kyoga loves the country, right? I mean, the, the, the boy is mad. <laughs> <laughs> he goes around with his Sengxiong plastic bag picking up rubbish from Tampines, right? That's, that's oh, wow. A, that, okay, it sounds a bit xenophobic, I think. Can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very Japanese thing. It takes a lot of pride yeah. surrounding. So every time he does his supermarket run, he would then have a plastic bag where he pick up rubbish and he just puts all of us to shame myself included, right? Um, so yes, I, I, I think he's he's happy here. He's settled here. His wife's happy here. So, so we are possibly looking at putting an application for PR for him. Uh, but but I think it's arrogant for us to think, oh, therefore he'll make the national team. Now that's going to be mm-hmm. down to his performance. That's yeah. going to be the next national coach. Um, if he's good enough and a coach likes him, then the coach picks him. Okay. Yeah. What, what about uh, for Zeko? Zerudin Mamadovic? Uh, Zeko, without giving too much away, um, he, okay, Zeko got married in the off-season. Oh, uh, congratulations so, to him. Yeah. So, to all of us who are married men, you know, like, he, he <laughs> afford to wear the pants, but he's not calling the shot. <laughs> so, I think, I think it's a case of, of bringing his wife into the country, uh, I see. The depths, so on and so forth. Right? If, if yeah. all's good, then yes, we, we would like him. We have a bit of a saying uh, around the club as well. Um, you know, better. Oh, it sounds like we're doomed for it. It's not. We we rather fail with family than succeed with strangers. Mm. Right. So mm. so if you've been with us for a while and we're all almost like family, uh, bear in mind that of course the unspoken rule is that you, you still continue to maintain your levels of professionalism and perform. Then I rather fail with family than succeed with strangers. Yeah. That's just my okay. excuse for not spending the big bucks, lah. <laughs> no, I mean, look, the, 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 the plan, the strategy that you've, you've spoken about, it all makes a lot of sense. And Nakamura, Mamedovic, the, the two guys have been excellent. I mean, excellent to watch. For me, it's like such a joy to watch them week in, week out and, and working on, uh, on commentary with these guys. You know, technically such good players. So I'm great that you guys have kept them around just for selfish, my selfish reasons in terms of how I enjoy <laughs> Thank you. Uh, watching Thank them you. play. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Roshan, do you have anything else that you want to ask? Any serious stuff before we, we, we get a I, few... Uh... I do have one serious question, Desmond. I hope you don't mind. I, I'm thoroughly impressed by everything you tell us about this family structure. It's not every day we get to speak to a chairman, right? So the insight for me is fascinating. When you arrive in 2017 to where you are now as a club, how, how big a challenge has that transformation been for you? And where, where do you want to see yourself in five years' time? Just to... Put things in perspective for us. Okay, I, I, I think a lot of what I've done is not possible without the backing of my MC. And these are really the silent uh, heroes because they allow me to take the lead, show my ugly face. <laughs> they, do, they do a lot of work in the background, right? Um, Lung Nen was my vice chair. He, he's now decided that uh, motorsport is more his thing. So he's gone <laughs> to motorsport. So he remains an honorary, honorary advisor. 
uh, Nicholas was a lawyer, long-term friend. Uh, the other Nicholas, Nick Hunter, Ian, my treasurer. All fantastic guys. I, I wish you could all meet them and get to know them. Uh, yeah. it's, and, and Wing Kong, it's really a brain's trust, right? And then we sit down, we chat, we chat, we chat, and say, okay, let's go do this, go do that. The very first thing that confronted us was, or, or the first philosophy that we had was this, you know, you want to build the best school. You don't get the best students. You must get the best teachers. Mm. Mm. Right, so no offense to any of the clubs out there, right? We felt it was more important to get the coaching staff, the backroom staff, absolutely spot on. Mm. And, and the person that we we sort of used as our role model in the early days was actually Uncle Go, right? Oh. <laughs> Uncle Go at seventy whatever years old, he's the youngest at heart. He turns up early for training. He yeah. takes so much pride, right? Um, he's respectful of everybody, even people who are one quarter his age, and he goes about his business. Uncle Go is the man, right? We <laughs> could do a lot worse than to sort of try and use Uncle Go as a of course. Man. And in the first season, we had format on the shirt. We just wanted people to respect, yeah. the, respect themselves. Even the players, you need to respect yourself, right? And 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 not have this very, you know, in Singapore football, there's this very destructive feature. You mentioned it, oh yeah, the fuller terrible. Uh. You mentioned another, oh yeah, the fuller terrible. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> terrible. Uh. Yeah, let's not do that, right? Let's yeah. not do that. Let's not be blindly optimistic, but let's try and see the best in everybody. Everybody's involved for a reason, right? I've become incredibly much poorer since I got involved in football and so there are a lot of other people. But there's a passion that unites us, right? There's a passion and, and, and let's concentrate on the positives. Of course, some people, again, are not fit for purpose, right? Then they have to move on. Doesn't yeah. mean they're not fit for us. They're not fit for football. It's just they're not fit for our club. Yeah. Right? And we have a vision of the sort of club we wanted to build, where, where people come in, they feel respected, they feel valued um, in a high-performing environment to the best of all the our resources are not finite. And, yeah. and that's what we tried to do. So we've dismantled and taken apart. Um, in the early days, I spent a lot of time, and this was pre-COVID, watching uh, under-19 games, under-17 games. Mm. And people were stung and mad fella in the corner of, of the stadium. And, oh my God, there's a new chairman. And after all the Wayang stars, uh, oh, chairman here, no, that's not it. Right, so, so, so for me, you have to start from the bottom up if you're serious about it. Mm. Right? Almost every, I, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite OCD about it in terms of trying to micromanage. And, and yeah. I, I'm not arrogant enough to think of all the right answers. I continually go back to my coaches. I continually go back to my MC and say, look guys, this is what I tend to do. How do you feel? And of course, we are always very wary of good thing as well. Right? Mm. So, so in that sense, we're very fortunate. I mean, again, we've got quite a good relationship with the other clubs, with the other chairman. Like, I'm probably the, the noisiest. I'm always asking questions, right? And, and I, I try to learn whether uh, vicariously or directly. I mean, we all mm. talk about LCS all the time, but to me, the club we really want to emulate is Elberex. Mm. Ah, okay. Elberex is a fantastically run club. Yeah. And, and do it on such a low key, you know, they, they, they don't go around screaming. And, you know, everybody yeah. says, you know, they, they get the cream. They don't get the cream of the crop. Mm. They don't. They don't, but they, but they pick their players judiciously. Yeah. They, they undergo training. They, they discipline them. You know, when, 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 we, when we get Albrecht's players joining us like Kyoga, you know, it's, it's, it's I, I don't quite know how to say it, but I'm a big fan of Albrecht's. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, same here. Uh, speaking of, of, of T-shirts, right? Can you just show us, two questions, can you just show us what's on your T-shirt? <laughs> Good. Prime for, nice. prime for Tampanese 2022. And what are you guys prime for? What are the targets? Don't know, you have to ask the advertising guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you're like advertising and doing stuff like this, man, which is great to see off the pitch activities. No, I, I, I'm, I'm still a Oreo dinosaur. Like. I mean, <laughs> there, there are bits of, of, of like social media, there, there are bits of, the, the, the youth are fantastic and like, yeah. right? So I try to stick to what I know best, right? In, in terms of uh, human dynamics and so forth and organizing. Come on, Desmond, on the pitch targets. Come on, I'm not, lo- not going to let you escape that one. Anything? Uh, we would like to be competitive. Okay. We would like to be competitive. Uh, we have a, a fair bit of pride in the cup because we are the last winners of the cup. So, so we would like to win the cup again. Uh, AFC, uh, there's a bit of sense of unfinished business. We have thought of the group before. Yeah. The so we, we would like to qualify from AFC. Yeah, okay. Anything Fantastic. else, Roger? I think we get to the, to the light no, stuff I, a little I, bit. I think let's switch the grill off, sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Desmond, thanks, for, thanks so much for all that insight. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, we just want to keep it a little bit lighthearted as we come towards the end of, uh, of, the, of the chat here with you. Um, let's start off with your favorite player from, from Singapore football. 
all time? Uh, <laughs> this will carbon date me. Uh, 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 Kim Song. Ah, okay. Oh, Kim Song. Wow. Okay. 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 Do you uh, have okay. one? Do, do you have one in the current era, or will that be putting you in trouble if it's not a Tampines player? <laughs> drink, drink. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a big fan of Shadan. Okay, okay. Favorite player from a world football Desmond? Uh, past or present? Uh, all time. Dalglish. Oh, wow. uh, uh, okay. I, I, sorry, carry on, Roshan. No, we get a lot of Liverpool fans on this show. I, I, I don't have know a feeling. How, how I have a we feeling. pass the vetting process because I don't agree. <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling that uh, um, we, we know what the next answer is going to be to this question. Favorite yeah. team then, Desmond? Tampines Rovers. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I'll let you know the secret, right? Just because you guys have been kind enough to put me on the board. I actually grew up a Geelong fan. Okay. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, my, 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 my dad knew Colin who started international contract specialist. Mm. So so in the mid 70s, I hung out in the dressing room with uh, Dola, Ashad, wow. Robert Tim, Saman Alipiche. Those were the household names there. Yeah. Nice. I uh, w- w- when I was growing up and playing COE and whatever and watching the S League back then, right? I used to hate Geelang and I used to dislike Tampanis. I, I don't like the East. I don't yeah. like the East, but now obviously I'm an adult. I'll be like, yeah, it's great. It's brilliant. Whatever. Let's just have it. Let's just have it. <laughs> right, Rosa, next one. You want to go? Desmond, any best friends in the game here? You cannot say your coaching staff. Uh, best friends as, as uh... involved in, in, in the in the local football scene. Or like maybe, I don't know, maybe another chairman that you're friendly with or that you're 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 close with or oh, um I, I get on quite well with uh, Yazin, the general secretary. Uh, okay. okay. That's a yeah. fantastic job that's oftentimes uh, under, underrated, right? Things go yeah. wrong, yes. <laughs> everything yeah. FAS. Yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. FAS. Yeah, that's very really unfair. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. This is just an opportunity for me to say our last episode was with Yazin. So be sure to check out on the playlist. You can hear from uh, Desmond's best friend while you're at it. Uh, final one, Desmond. Uh, hopes for Singapore football in 2022. Um that we continue on an upward path. Um, I, I have a lot of faith in UTR. Uh, I think for the first time in a long time, we have an opportunity to do something for Singapore football. Uh, I hope everybody suspends their cynicism for a while and try to come together. I, I think we like a charismatic figure. Uh, I think for the first time in a long time, we have a sports minister who is capable and insistent on, on doing something. So hopefully, it can all come together for us. Onwards yeah. and Okay, great way to, to end the chat. Desmond, thank you very much no, for pleasure. taking the time to, to speak to us. We really, really appreciate it. And you've given us some, some wonderful insight, man. All the best for this season. Desmond Ong, Chairman of Tampines Rovers. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. Uh, thank you. I think that's it for, for us from uh, Roshan and Raushan here. For you guys tuning in, if you want to get involved, just uh, comment below and let us know what you think of, of the conversation. Uh, join in, subscribe, share, help the channel to grow. And we'll be back with more great content your way this season. I'm so proud of Roshan's social media work. Thanks, guys. See you next week.